Hello, sixth graders. Today we are going to be doing a study sync, and I would like you to watch the intro um, video here. And then I definitely want you to read. Okay, you can listen to the audio. Then I want you to watch Study Sync TV, which I'm going to play for you in just a second. Then I want you to do the think and the write. Okay, so here is the Study Sync TV. I've been thinking about this though. Lost in the woods. No school, no homework. What's the problem again? You know there's also no food? No Xbox either. The horror. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't say all of it was good. The plane crash part, I'll pass. Dude, I mean, I don't think this is like Boy Scouts. He's gonna die. He's not gonna die. He could. It's a survival story. Brian's gonna survive. We gotta finish it to find out. Should we talk about the prompt, you guys? How does Brian Robinson's point of view change over the course of this excerpt from Hatchet? Analyze the specific ways in which the author develops Brian's point of view and leads him to a turning point in the story. So, point of view, that's like first person, second person, etc.? Actually, I have it right here. Point of view, the perspective from which a story is told. There are three types, first person, second person, and third person. Okay, so this is clearly third person, right? I mean, the narrator's talking about Brian. But there are different types of third person. Objective, omniscient, and limited omniscient. <sighs> this just refers to what the narrator knows, you guys. What the narrator knows? How am I supposed to know what the narrator knows? Yeah, like sometimes the narrators know everything everyone's thinking. And other times the narrator only knows what the characters do and say. Well, the narrator here must know what Brian's thinking. I mean, the part where he's dreaming about a cheeseburger. So it's omniscient? The whole excerpt is basically just what's going on in Brian's head. If it was a... Third person objective? It'd be a pretty short read if it was objective, not to mention less interesting. The narrator only knows what Brian's thinking, though. He doesn't know what his parents or anyone else is. So that means... Third person limited omniscient. The narrator can see into the thoughts of only some of the characters, usually one. Nice work, team. Anyway, how does he develop this point of view? That's where I'm lost. Maybe it'd help if you read this again. Okay, hey guys, now, Brian's point of view doesn't change exactly, does it? It's always him and his... Right. Third person. Limited omniscient. What changes is Brian himself. Ooh, look at you go, Alex. So the prompt is asking how the author develops Brian's point of view and leads him to a turning point. Two things, I guess. Well, at the beginning, Brian seems all sure that he's going to be rescued. Like here. They would look for him. His father and mother would be frantic. They would tear the world apart to find him. For someone whose plane just crashed in the, uh, where is he again? The Canadian wilderness. Looks pretty awesome, too. Wow, that's awesome. Um, excuse me? Awesome? How about dangerous? It's huge. To find a kid in all that? Brian doesn't seem worried enough. No, eventually he does start to worry. Now, with the thought of the burger, the emptiness roared at him. He could not believe the hunger. Had never felt this way. They might come today. They would probably come today. Sounds like he's not so sure. He's just trying to talk himself out of being scared. Or he doesn't want to admit that he's scared. Well, yeah. I mean, what good is it going to do for him to admit he's scared? I don't know. It's not like there's anyone around to make fun of him. Well, it's not that. It's just if he's going to make it through this, he's got to stay strong, even if he's lying to himself. That works for a little while, but then... Cheeseburger and fries. He starts repeating how he has nothing. It's like he's getting more negative as it goes along. You know, I'm thinking... Really, Alex? When's the last time you did that? Hey! <laughs> it's just... It's interesting how all the action is going on in Brian's head. There isn't really anything happening, you know? I like how he compares everything to what he's seen in movies or on the news. That's what I do. It's not like I have any other real-life experiences to compare this to. But there's a turning point in here. Oh, yeah, when he sees the hatchet his mom gave him. I think it's when he thinks about this Mr... Purpich? I think I'm gonna take a look at this one more time.
I agree. Brian hits a turning point in the way he's thinking. Because first he's like, maybe I should try and figure out just how I stand. It will give me something to do, keep me from thinking of food, until they come to find me. So at first he's just trying to keep his mind busy. But then he thinks back to his English teacher. Brian thought of him now, wondered how to stay positive and stay on top of this. All Perpich would say is that I have to get motivated. I'm not sure he knows how, though. Maybe that's where the hatchet comes in. I mean, hatchet, it's the title. So what does that mean? I think it reminds Brian of his mother. It gives him strength to keep going, to get motivated. Actually, I think the turning point is here. One other thing, those were all the things he had, but he also had himself. That's the other thing Mr. Perpich says to him. I mean, said to him. Well, he's pretending to have a conversation with Perpich in his head. Right, it goes like this. First, he's not afraid, then he's a little afraid, and then he's hungry. And then he realizes that he's his most valuable asset. So the turning point in the story is really just a turning point in his head? Or him finding his own strength, you know, instead of waiting around to get rescued? Realizing that he's the one that's got to do something. Oh, <laughs> poor Brian. I hope he gets that hamburger. You know, this story's making me pretty hungry, too. Yeah, it looks like you're all set for the Canadian wilderness. Yeah, on second thought. What? You're not as rugged as you thought? Are you? Yes, definitely. Do you think you could do it? Yes. Without hamburgers. <laughs> <laughs>